Right, now joining us on the line is John Kearns. His show is coming to the Warwick Arts Centre this Sunday at 8 o'clock. The tour is called Don't Worry, They're Here. First things first, John, how are you? I'm very well, pal. Uh, delighted to speak to you and to the people of uh, Warwick University. <laughs> no, thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it. Uh, first things first with the tour, Don't Worry, They're Here. Um, <laughs> without giving too much away, what, what's, what's that kind of referring to? Well, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a title which... Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, in London and Edinburgh, where I've done gigs before, uh, feels, you know, in, in, in a way, it's nice for me to remind myself not to worry about how the show's going to go because uh, there's an audience out there that, that wants to see you. But uh, as I might find on the, this being my first tour, <laughs> it might be a case of uh, maybe worry a little bit. <laughs> not enough people are here. But um, it's... Uh, it, you know what, you come up with a title in if you're going to the Edinburgh Festival, say, mm. uh, that's in August and you have to come up with a title in March. So the trick, because you haven't written a show, is to come up with a, a title vague enough to, uh, uh, <laughs> in a year and a half's time, uh, still kind of... Uh, I mean, it basically means nothing, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, I, I hate uh, There's no like big reveal at the end where people go... Oh my lord, he shouldn't have worried because that's it. It means it's it's a lyric from a song which I changed, and uh, um, <laughs> every every answer I give to this question is completely uh, made up. I mean, I, I, I'd love to read back my interviews and see. Uh, there's 20 different scenarios. We'll make a compilation of all the, all the different answers. And uh... <laughs> yeah, and this is this is the day of cracks. I finally. <laughs> I've finally gone mad uh, on Warwick Uni Radio and gone, you know what, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's an absolute, uh, uh, <laughs> it's an absolute shower, basically. I've put my hands up here, uh, I'm, a, I'm a complete, uh, I'm a complete idiot and um, I'd, I'd love to see people at the show, but uh, you know what, <laughs> if they don't turn up, I'm like, well, what can I do? If there's four people in the audience... They get the show of their life, and, uh, but yeah, to, to answer your question, uh, I haven't got a clue. Now, of course, uh, you're coming to the World Art Centre this Sunday. Have you ever been to this particular venue before, or this part of the world? Uh, I was in Coventry for a stag do. <laughs> right. Uh, in uh, June. And uh, we got on a barge. Oh, right. And uh, we went from Coventry to Rugby. And uh, I've never seen excite. I, I think I think there are very few, um, very few moments in life more exciting than when you're on a stag or a hen do on a barge, and uh, you're about to go under a bridge. Right. The uh, the uh, the excitement is palpable. So you got people start gearing up, thinking they they just can't believe what's going to happen under the bridge. Uh, you go under, everyone goes a bit quiet, and then you come back out, and it's party time again. So um, there's so fond memories. <laughs> my 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 uh, best memory of uh, of Coventry <laughs> was um, uh, actually, you know what? I got I, I I was looking for a pub, and a bloke walked me 15 minutes to the pub. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That's very kind. That's that's the Coventry people for you. Yeah. Um. Now, of course, the tour isn't just a UK tour. You're also going to Australia for a few gigs, I gather. Um, what's the kind of connection with Australia? So the um, Melbourne Comedy Festival uh, is arguably the second biggest comedy festival after after the Edinburgh Fringe. Mm. And uh, <laughs> there's one lady that walks around Edinburgh and uh, she sees all the shows. And then she, if she likes your show, emails you and says, would you like to do a month? in Melbourne. Mm. Uh, I've, I've been very lucky to uh, do it with my past two shows. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's kind of, it's basically a big comedy festival in the, in the CBD area of, uh, of Melbourne. I mean, it's, if someone had said to me, uh, you're going to have to go to the other side of the world to make a living in March, I, uh, I, I don't think I would have believed them, but, but that is the situation I'm in. <laughs> um, but I'm also going to Sydney as well. I've, I've never... I've never been to Sydney. Mm. Uh, that's gig there. So, um, I mean, yeah, th this job, you know, it, of course there are ups and downs, and there's there's many reasons why I argue you shouldn't 
shouldn't become a comedian. <laughs> but uh, you do see parts of the world from Sydney to uh, Warwick Art Centre. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, you just, like I was saying, I, I, I mean, I was joking, but I, I'm say I have literally no idea who's going to turn up. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to Warwick and worrying, but I'm also going to Sydney. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, it's not even, uh, there's no, there's, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you've called me out a very, you've called me out a very interesting time where I've started to realise the tour starts in three days and now I'm panicking a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you're getting the gold here. <laughs> Um, in terms of gigging abroad, doing it, doing a gig abroad, is that something you've done before, or are you? I mean, obviously, if you count Scotland as a as abroad, but is yeah, are you expecting I, a kind of different vibe? I've, um, I yeah, no, I, I've, I've I've gigged in, like I was saying, in Australia, and I've done mm. a bit of like Scandinavia and a few oh, really? in Europe and all that. Yeah, I think you know, I mean, you know, if you're gigging in, say, uh, Copenhagen or Sweden. Uh, you know their English is better than than mine, <laughs> uh, but but they, you know they have a very dark sense of humour. Um, right. So quite, uh, uh, yeah, quite you know like you can't really upset them too much, and that's not really my style. But uh, that stuff goes down quite well over there. Mm. Um, I mean, to, to be honest, I, I can't. You can't adapt to well. <laughs> maybe you should be able to, but. I could only do what I, I, I've written, I've created, and of course I'm going to have to change a few things for, say, the Australian shows, yeah. just because they might not understand, say, you know, a brand name or something like that. But um, you, you have to kind of stay focused and just you kind of drill it home that you, you just got. If you put, if you pretend to the audience that they should know what you're talking about, they will know what you're talking about. <laughs> If you kind of tentatively go, oh, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, then they're going to be like, all right, I don't. <laughs> if you just stand there and lie and go, you know about this, right? They might, they might have a clue what you're talking about, but they're like, yeah, sure, mate. I mean, it's a complete, uh, it's a complete <laughs> confidence trick. Really? It, oh, that is all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is all stand up. Is see the advice you for know, aspiring well, comedians is you know just 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 tell a few lies. <laughs> Well, it's funny when you start out. There's a big, uh, there's a big kind of, uh, uh, there's a big kind of uh, currency on being honest and being truthful, and uh, I agree with that. Mm. But uh, when I started out, I thought that meant you know, saying all of your, all of your darkest secrets and all of your, all of your. You know, every, basically saying everything. And mm. it, it doesn't mean that. It's being honest to yourself, being truthful to yourself. So, for example, I wear a wig. I wear false teeth. Uh, I, I look like an idiot. <laughs> and, you know, if you saw me before that, when I started doing that, I, I wasn't being myself because I was standing there, just like I'm talking to you now, trying to do jokes that weren't really my jokes. And it was only when I started, you know, acting of acting the fool kind of thing. Mm. So I then was like, oh, no, this is me. But like, my role in in in, uh, in in comedy is to be the idiot, not to be the satirist, not to be the, uh, you know, the wise-cracking observationist. Yeah. Even though, you know, those stuff can come into material. But, but, but what I'm good at, what I'm good at is, um, you know, it's basically finding, you know, as you as you go on, I'm going way off what your question was. Here, That's but, all right. But, 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 you know, you realise your, your limitations uh, as you start going on. And so, uh, to answer your question, uh, yeah, you do have to, uh, you do have to change your material when uh, gigging abroad. Mm. <laughs> Now, of course, John, you were a student, uh, we're a student radio station here, and you, of course, went to university at UEA, University of East Anglia. Um, did, yes. Have you got any fond memories of the kind of, of your time there, and is that where you first started doing comedy? Yeah, so we, um, I, I think, you know, I look back at, uh, so for example, I lived with, um, at university, I lived with uh, Greg James, who's oh, really? on Radio 1. Yes. He was, uh, what was he like uh, to live with? Uh, you know what? He's very, uh, he was 
uh, yeah, incredibly, he was very professional then. He had DJ gigs. Uh, he had DJ gigs at the local clubs. Hmm. He DJed at the student union bar, and he he didn't. He had a he he had Radio One breakfast show, early breakfast, before he graduated. My goodness. He uh, yeah he um he he was going to have a he was going to do a job I think up in Birmingham, and then he got a call from the BBC going, before you sign that contract, do you want to come down to London and talk to us? He was very um yeah he was very driven and. And my friend Pat Cahill as well was also a stand-up comedian. And uh, there's another chap called Dan who, who now lives in America. And I kind of look at that house and I think, wow, it's kind of nice that we all, you know, the idea that two two people in there are professional comedians. It's mm. Pat and I's job. And Greg is obviously, you know, um, becoming a, uh, a uh, heavyweight in... Um, you know, light entertainment on BBC. Um, I've never described him as that before. But, <laughs> but, uh, he, uh, but do you know what I mean? Like, I, so I kind of, um, I feel very lucky that I found my guys. You know, and my friend John, who directs the shows, he won an Olivier Award yeah. uh, in January. So I kind of think, you know, if, if I was going to, I don't mind to give advice, but if anyone's at uni uh, wondering how to get into it or, or get into anything, you've got to find your guys. And then once you've got your friends, you then you then move as a pack, you know. Mm. And so, are there uh, any any other interesting up, yeah. memories from your kind of time as a student? Um, well, I mean, you know, geeks were appalling. I, I kind of think <laughs> back to how I, what I put friends through, and um, you know, I think you know, I remember getting heckled very badly, and. Um, I remember Noel Fielding saying something about this. When you're starting out and you get heckled, there's no buffer zone between your mouth and your brain. Mm. You have a complete animal instinct to just go, you just say something. And at this gig, I remember at Christmas back in like 2007 now, I got heckled by this woman. And there was, you know, a lot of friends in the audience. And I said, I mean, I can't repeat it, but it was a horrific, <laughs> a horrific <laughs> sentence. Um, I left. I just left the stage, uh, hid in the toilet. <laughs> oh my my friends kind of knew this, but in this kind of in a kind of gap, I'd run out of the toilet and just gone to a local park to. I was crying my eyes out. It, it was that bad. Really? Anyway, every but then everyone was then looking for me because they thought I was in the toilet and thought I'd like climbed through the window. So then I remember like Greg got in his car and he drove to like. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that, it's not funny, but he. he, he I mean, this is how bad he's got. He drove to the river. Oh, he my goodness. I, he thought I jumped. Is this Greg James? Yeah, he got in his car. And he was like, where's he gone? And I was literally across the road in a park just going, oh, my God, how am I going to show my face oh my again? And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think back to those things and I think, you know what? Uh, you've learned a lot in the past 10 years. Um it's all going to be fine on this tour. And is there a part of you that kind of is grateful that happened in a weird way? Because you know that all comedians, it's, well, it seems to be all comedians kind of have that, or have a bad gig or a bad patch, and you've kind of got it out of the way, and you've obviously gone on since then, you know, to be a, a proper comedian, and it's like, it must be quite, I don't know, like a big learning curve. Yeah. You, Probably didn't think that at the time. No, I mean, no. Well, I, I, again, I remember in London I had a gig, and it, it was kind of similar in that I didn't know what to do with a uh, heckler, and I I tried to do something that had happened before, which is something you, <laughs> uh, you shouldn't really ever do. You have to be in the moment mm. rather than go, oh, well, it worked last time. And uh, I, again, I was absolutely destroyed by it. But I remember thinking, I remember that I'd walked around the block of that venue. I was like, well, oh, I'm, uh, is this it? And I remember thinking, well, no, I'm just going to call up that promoter and get a gig at next week and say... Uh, get me back on stage as quick as possible because I mean <laughs> bad gigs are horrific to go through mm. but they exist in that moment with that audience and then when you walk off stage it's gone it really is gone really um, and you know when you're young and you and you haven't done many gigs it obviously feels you know big but ten years on Although I still, 
<laughs> I still remember it absolutely frame for frame. Yeah. Of film. Um, you just, uh, you know, there's bigger th- there's bigger problems in life than uh, someone getting upset at not finding you funny. Mm. Now, John, I know uh, you've only got a couple of minutes left, so just a few quick things, if I can, before you go. Um, I noticed Absolutely. as well that you you were a tour guide at the Houses of Parliament. Um, d- does does politics play a role in your comedy, or and and what was that experience like? Yeah, it was. Um, I was there for about four years. Really? And uh, yeah, that was kind of that was my day job. And then, um, you know, I was very lucky that my parents lived in London, but they said, uh, you know, if you want to be a comedian and rightly so they were like you you can do that but you, you need a job <laughs> and um and uh, you can do, and, and so i kind of proved it to themselves sorry to myself and, and also them to, to a, uh, a degree that you know it was, re- it was really what i wanted to do mm. so yeah I was, I, I was a tour guide at parliament but what was quite nice was that you know it's obviously a very serious place uh and you know, you're taking round. Usually, school children that uh, are either very, very bored and don't want to be there, or are very young and don't know why they're there. And you know, so I kind of actually took it very seriously, really? and they kind of gave me a respite from then in the evenings thinking of funny things, if that makes sense. Yeah. So they they complemented each other very well. They kind of dovetailed into uh, quite a healthy life, to be honest. It's only when I left work and comedy became uh, my full-time job that I was like, it, it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying like I've fully uh, recovered, but it, it takes a long time to to uh, get your head around. You got to you got to find ways of escaping um, the the job, whatever it is, whether it being a comedian or whether it being a cleaner or a radio DJ or a bus <laughs> driver. You know, you got to find the other thing and the. Uh, Weirdly, I never thought that is what I have to do now. But, uh, yeah, no, I love that job. And, um, uh, yeah, an incredible place to work. Yeah, it must have been nice to have had that contrast. Like you said, obviously, in the in the evenings, you, you, you kind of do the funny stuff. But in, in, the, in the day, you can take it nice and seriously. Um, yeah, yeah. John, just before we let you go, I'm going to do a very quick, quick fire round, if that's okay, just to get to know you oh, a little bit better. It, yes. Absolutely, yeah. So first things first, John, uh, what is your favourite food? Lasagna. Favourite box set? Oh, uh, let's go with uh, Cheers. I haven't heard of that one. Cheers? No. Um, the set in, um, it's a sitcom. Set oh. in a bar in Boston. I'll have, to, oh. I'll have to check that one out. Oh, check it out. Am oh, I missing out? Oh, it's one of the best sitcoms of all time. <laughs> um, comedic Idol? Uh, today it is... Uh, uh, let's go with, uh, 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 let's go with Tony Hancock. Tony Hancock. Uh, Favourite comedian that you've performed alongside? That's a very good question. Uh, I enjoy performing with, uh, Pat Cahill. Favourite place to perform, other than, of course, the Warwick Arts Centre? Um... I did a gig at the Old Vic in London, oh, right. and uh, I, I never understood the difference between I, 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 to perform on a stage like that. And actually, it makes you realise why those theatres are so special and why they're designed and built the way they are. I know that might sound very silly, but I was like, oh yeah, this isn't a basement in um, in uh, Edinburgh. This is a uh, wow. This is actually an incredible. To do so, uh, yeah. Any old Victorian theatre that, that one that one sticks in my mind. It really does. Favorite takeaway? Indian. Favorite sport? Football. And are you? Who do you support? I'm a Fulham fan, but uh, I spend about eight hours a day on my fantasy football app, <laughs> and I'm uh, currently struggling to work out what to do with uh, Anatovic's uh, injury at West Ham. He's out for a month, uh, isn't he? He's out for a month. Uh, I don't have the budget. To go for uh, Marquez, uh, Lingard is slowly sliding away now. Sanchez coming in. Mm. Uh, it may be time to detonate the wild card. As an Arsenal fan, I'd say wait out a little bit and then buy a Bamiyang when he comes. Well, I'm thinking of Mkhitaryan. I think Mkhitaryan is going to be phenomenal for Wenger. Could be. I just have a feeling. 
That'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sure it would be, yeah. And finally, best thing about touring, worst thing about touring? Uh, I Well, I'm going to have to speak, uh, because it's my first date on Sunday at the Warwick Arts Centre, I'm going to have to be... Uh, I'm going to have to use my imagination now. I hope the best thing about touring is seeing this beautiful country that I call home. Uh, the bad thing will be being away from my uh, beautiful girlfriend and loving family. But uh, I'm sure with the warmth that the audiences will give me as I trot up and down these aisles, uh, I will feel at home wherever I am. John, best of luck for your first date this Sunday. Don't forget, you can come and see John Kearns with Don't Worry, They're Here. It's coming to the Warwick Art Centre this Sunday at 8 o'clock. Tickets are still available. Make sure you get them in quickly. John Kearns, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much, pal.